All right, day six, types of bias. So sampling bias occurs when the sampling design systematically favors certain outcomes over others. In other words, the sample will not be truly representative of the population of interest. So we're talking about different types of bias. All right, there are three types of sampling bias. Okay, so the first one is called selection bias. All right, this occurs due to a systematic exclusion of some part of the population in the sampling process. So for example, using a phone directory could leave out all these groups, especially nowadays. Um, you know, a lot of people don't have landlines, so that cuts them out. Um, people who are homeless, college students in dorms don't have a, a landline. There might be a phone on the floor. Uh, prison inmates, same idea. All right. The next one is called response or measurement bias. Okay, this one uh, tends to produce values that differ from the true value, right? Individuals ch chosen, um, something's, uh, there's a typo there. Individuals chosen may, oh, it's supposed to be lie. <laughs> now I know what it is, may lie for some reason. I knew there was something, I could figure it out. So, for example, have you ever cheated on your significant other? Have you used illegal drugs? Well, people may not want to answer that. I mean, they, may, they may not feel comfortable with answering that. Understandably so. So if you ask that question, you know, we're going to be doing projects in here. If you ask that question for your survey question, there's a good chance you may not get a true representation because everyone will not want to be honest with you for fear of, you know, getting in trouble or something. Number three is called non-response bias. Now, this one is where data are not obtained from all individuals selected for the sample. You may not be able to reach them all, okay? Or they may just refuse, all right? Uh, I'm sure you've been at home when someone's called and say, hey, can you take a short survey? No, hang up. Or you call customer service and they say, please hold on the line after we're done with you to complete a uh, short survey. And you hang up and don't do it. That would be non-response. Uh, mailing surveys often will get trashed. May not even open it to see what it is if you don't recognize it. Kind of like when you don't recognize a number, you don't answer it, let it go to voicemail. A lot of people, if they don't recognize what the mail is from, they just throw it away. So therefore, that would be non-response bias. All right, so examples of sampling bias. Voluntary response sampling. So the individuals choose themselves by responding to a general appeal. So you're listening to the radio or watching the news and it says, hey, call in and give your opinion. Or like an ESPN survey, you're biased because you're already watching that program or listening to that program. Uh, poor sampling design favors biased opinions. So depending on how they do these surveys, it could end up being very biased. Convenience sampling. Now when you do convenience sampling, it's what's really easy for you, okay? It's cost efficient, but it's also poor sampling due to bias. So convenience would be like, you know, uh, you stand in the doorway of school when kids are coming to school and you take a survey. Well, what if they went to another um, spot to enter school? Um, or you surveyed at your lunchtime. Well, that leaves out people from other lunchtimes. Um, or you survey people at the football game. Well, what about people who don't go to the football game? Um, you may have seen people like in the Walmart parking lot or the library parking lot doing surveys. Well, that's only getting people who shop at Walmart or go to that library or go to the library at all. So it, it is convenience bias. Whoops. All right. So bias to poor wording of surveys. So version one, do you think there should be an amendment to the Constitution prohibiting abortions? Or it could be worded like this. Do you think there should be an amendment to the Constitution protecting the life of the unborn child? These both hit different emotions the way it's worded. 
Okay, not going to say which one is right or wrong, one better than the other, just saying they do hit differently. So version one got 29% yes and 62% no, whereas version two got 50% yes and 39% no. So you can see how the way it's asked can affect the outcome. Get rid of this. All right, so now we're to the river problem. All right, so here's the problem. <clears throat> Suppose we wanted to estimate the yield of our corn field. The field is square and divided into 16 equally sized plots, four by four, rows and columns. A river runs along the eastern edge of the field. We want to take a sample of four plots. So using a random number generator, we're going to pick a sample of four plots. First off, we need to number them. So I'm going to number, you know, one, two, three, four. I'm not going to fill in every one. Obviously, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You get the gist. If you want to fill them in, you know, in the corner, that's fine. All right. Now it says use a random number generator. So we've done this already. So what you're going to do is hit pause, Google search a random generator from 1 to 16, all right, and do it four times. Whoops. Okay, you put yours in. I got 16, 6, 1, and 11. Wow, crazy. I got a diagonal. Tic-tac-toe. All right, so that's what I got, all right? Now it says, randomly choose one plot from each horizontal row. This is called a stratified sample, okay? So randomly, so basically each one of these is gonna be one to four, okay? And we're gonna choose. So go to your random generator, hit pause, and do one to four this time, all right? And pick four, okay? I got three, Three, two, one. Too bad I didn't get a four. Okay, that is a stratified sample because I chose one from each geographical group. So we call them rows. If you remember the other day, we circled groups of five, okay, and did cluster and stratified. This is stratified. All right, now it says finally. Randomly choose one plot from each vertical column. So one, two, three, four, and do your random generator again. So from each column, I got three, three, one, four. Okay, this is also a stratified random sample. Now, which of the three method, methods, methods above do you think will be the most effective and why? We'll discuss that in class together, okay? Now it's time for the harvest. The number below are the yield for the 16 plots. For each of your three samples above, calculate the average yield, okay? So you're going to look at what we just did and use these numbers. So I'm going to do this. And have this kind of next to me. All right, so for the first one, and you do this with your numbers. I'll just show you the first one, and you're going to do it on your own. So for the first one, I'm going to add up 4, 31, 92, and 147, and divide by 4. Go ahead and do that for all three of these on your own. Okay, so here are the averages I got. On my first one, I got 68.5. On my second one, I got 56. And oddly enough, I got 68.5 on this one also. Okay, those are my three. So 
So in class, I'm going to gather this data and we're going to see how it looks like for all of us. Okay, and that's it. Here is the homework assignment.